Hey there, YouTube. Um, okay, I'm just like playing around, I'm waiting on some parts. As I blew up my power supply, um, and I've just been prattling around with my auto transformer at the back there. Which in fact, I can go and move this out of the way because that doesn't not need it at the minute. I got my um, my auto transformer there, and underneath it, and you can see that white donut. That's my isolation transformer. And between that and the auto transformer, there is like three rubber discs, plastic. Well, yeah, rubber discs. They're isolators, you know, for the transformers. So I've just got that between there and there anyway, and it makes sure I got a nice, uh, pretty firm. Sort of thing going on there. Uh, there, I've got it connected into my um, connector block. And somebody asked me, so if you watch this, um, C C N C C P C. Hold on, I'll tell you. Yeah, it's C P C. Um, they're like Farnell. So what I got here down the bottom there is I got a, um, a transformer. It's a um, 240 volt in. Well, it's two uh, one tens, so they're connected together. Uh, I don't know if you can see this purple and white wire down there. That just makes the um, makes that two forty here instead of two one twenties. Puts them in series, and then I've got the two outputs of twenty four volts per channel. Um, two secondary windings on the output. Sorry, twenty four volts. Each, so I've put them in series together to give me, uh, you know, 48, and that's what I've got going into here. So basically, I've got like, you know, sort of like 50, um, sort of 48 volts, which I can adjust with this um, variable transformer, which is brilliant. And then it comes out to a a bridge rectifier, and at the minute, this this is connected. Um, and this is a 50 amp thing, it doesn't need to be on there anymore, I was just checking it make sure it works. Um, and that's just connected to the probes of that, that multimeter that was connected in. And I'll put this back in, and I think this is 10 amps or something. There's plenty anyway, absolutely plenty, and they'll just go in there and get screwed in. I'll do that in a minute. Get that set back up. Uh, I should just not bother recording this because who's going to want to watch me struggling? I'm trying to put wires in, but I will screw them back together again. And then that goes through that bridge rectifier, which is coming out here to this um, capacitor. Just a few capacitors. Now they're a bit crap, these capacitors, to be fair. They're a bit old. And that's a 200 volt, that's a 100 volt, that's a 100 volt. And between them, I think they make up to around about. What we got? We got 820 there, 820 there, and I can't see this being that big, but it's not a great deal. It doesn't even make a uh, like 470 microfarad, uh, 4700. Sorry. So it's not so it's not it's not great, and I, I've been putting uh, these on because what I've been doing is I've been playing around with this little um, power supply circuit now. Oh, I say pass by so it's not it's, it's an LM317 but it's the LM317 uh, AHV which means this thing is like a, a 60 volter which is quite good um, and I've got a tip 35 uh, tip 3055 I think I've got that right not 5530 no 3055 on the back has a pass transistor for current so uh, now I did have my meter sort of like connected up to this, but I decided to put these little things on instead because uh, I just kept worrying that I was going to waste the battery in there. So <laughs> I just thought I may as well connect these up. Now, of course, the problem that I got is if I'm going to go above 30 volts, the input voltage for this to work on this one here is it says maximum 30 volts, but I've put a resistor in line here with this one and I've also got a resistor in line here with this one because this is what just illuminates these are the power wires that just illuminate the um, 
and the working voltage for it but it's the maximum I'm pretty sure I've had it up to 44 volts on this before all that's happened on these so far is they've just gone off and I've turned the voltage back down again they've come back to life again which is quite good because um, if you do exceed the voltage it does say on the uh, eBay website that you'll just kill it that it'll burn so let me um, let me just um, pause this for a second and cut those wires and switch this on this is just the just a quick test on that actually just while I've everything set up I know it's a little bit extra messy I've just been just been salvaging that so, yeah I just wanted to test that again actually um, 44 volts I'm pretty sure this one I had connected and it just went off that one wasn't connected at the time so I don't know what's going to happen but I turn that on ok and then turn this up a little tiny bit so we got power yep. 8.9 volts there and what's going on so that voltage is feeding this showing us 9 volts right and then this is all connected here bit of a mess but it's connected there so the twisty wires are going in and then feeding this which of course then is feeding that that LED uh, just, for, just for the sake of putting the um, so you can see the voltage I wasn't gonna, this is just a quick bit in between this bit of video that I'm just making so let's just turn that up a little tiny bit All right, so we've got that on and now I'm going to turn the voltage up and just to see what happens at 44 volts and um, we're going to be seeing 44 volts here can I back that out like that and can I turn this up while I'm doing it oh it's got a twin trim yeah ok so right are we on 21 so this is like the limit yeah still regulating well so this is like the limit so now but really we should be burning oh look at that it's getting quite bright just trying to yeah so I burnt one I think that's burnt straight away that one's going to come back on again but I'm pretty sure this one's dead let's see yeah so yeah most definitely, um, this one's got a resistor as well. I'll take that off just to make sure it's the uh, same as this. So for the red red ones, if you go above 30 volts, then so or what was that? We'll have to look back on the video. If you go above 30 volts, it dies. But if you go above 30 volts on this one, it blacks out and comes back to life again when you reapply voltage within the given range. Just thought so I'd do that little check just so you can see on the video. Okay, so I should probably do moving some of these wires out of the way just so it doesn't look so so it doesn't mess in. Should have done that with the camera off or anything. Um if I just pull that through there, hopefully it will come through without pulling out and out too much. Just to get those out of the way a bit. Do that, just get that out of the way. Okay, let's put those over there. So, now what we got here now is basically it's just this pile of mess. So, I just move these capacitors over here because what I've got on here is I got myself a, a little LED, 10 watt LED from eBay and I've also connected to the LED this piece of wire here which goes off to this thermometer and I've got another one here which is connected here and that goes to the back of this tip uh, 3055 so if I switch those on as you can see hopefully uh, we've got one thermometer there saying 24.8 and the other one saying 25.2 I mean does it make any difference on this if I put these lights on put that across there 
I just don't want the um, I don't want the light to start making it flicker on the screen. So, okay, I think we should be on around about 14 volts here. I can sort of look, it says 40 volts at the top. I'm just going to flip that down anyway. Let's see what we got. We got 11.3. That's because we're drawing a bit of power. Um, we got this one. Now, this little, this is a voltage um, regulated and current regulated circuit. And it does work. I've got a little bit of an issue with it, but it does it does work and at one stage it was what was um, powering uh, I was using this to power these yeah to actually um, be for the lights but of course I'm using LM338 and they will only take like 30 volt input really so I'm going to swap those out in a minute. I'm going to put a couple of the um, the LM three one seven HVs there, like this is here. Because even you know I can turn this up. I can't like, turn it up too far because I'll turn it up too far. What's it say? It's seven point nine five. But we get to watch the get to watch the temperature go up on the old on the LED. See that temperature goes up. We also get to see the temperature go up as well of the um, oh, I, don't know if you can see that. I hope you can see that. But the temperature is slowly going up. Of the tip to 3055. It's quite hard to see in the back of this camera, it's got a very small screen. So I hope you can see that anyway. And that's that's up there for a second. So we can turn it up a bit higher. No, because we've got eight volts here, we've only got ten volts now. So what I need to do is turn that up a little bit more. Give it at least twelve to get ten out the other side. So about 12 volts there, look. And then we get ten out of the other side. Temperature's still going up on the uh, LED. If it gets brighter as well. And uh, of course the temperature's going up on that. Tip 3055 as well. So you can see that. Here. Yeah. There we go. Now, also, I'm just going to just switch this off for a second, because earlier on, I've got a little 55 on there, let's put the plug on it now, I also had the, my oscilloscope leads connected, but I connected them across the, um, the capacitor there, so I could so I could see the amount of ripple um, you know as I turn up the, the um, this LED of course I'm drawing more current which means I'll be getting more more ripple especially as like I said these are um, these are rubbish these are old capacitors for starters and there's not very many uh, microfarads there I think I've got more. I think I've got more here on this one than I have on the whole lot here, and it makes a big difference when I put this on. I've got some bigger capacitors coming. I bought myself. I think it was three or four, um, ten thousand microfarads. You know, for um, a power supply. There's no bleed resistors or anything across here. I'm not going above like thirty volts at the minute. Um, and it is just basically I'm just playing around I'm just looking for myself so I can see the differences when I add more capacitance and um, just you know because well this is how I how I get to find out what's going on with things a little bit just by 
actually experimenting. So if I just connect up this to this PC side. And so leave that like that. And across here. Even though that says 50 millivolts, that seems to be. Yeah, I'm not sure if that's entirely true, but uh, zoom, zoom, I'll put this on here. <clears throat> what we got going on. I'm going to press the auto button actually. I don't know what it was set for last night, I can't be bothered to fiddle around with it too much. It'll just be interesting to see what that brings up. There we go. So, that's what we got, look. That is the, s the signal. You can see that, okay. If I turn down that. That should... You know, that's one of the annoying things about this. This should be back on AC. Okay, so I'm just going to auto that and just see if it stays on AC. Cause I have noticed a few things. I've had it freeze up on me a couple of times as well. I'll go a little back to the AC. How annoying is that? And it changed that as well, so... So we're at 50 millivolt per division, so we're about like 130 millivolt. And I'm just going to change the um, acquire to something that's a little bit easier to see rather than average. Put on normal. There we go, that one's in. Not pretty, but. And so now if I apply. Start drawing that current up. Right, just turn it That's 100 millivolts. Now that's 200 millivolts per division. And if I start pulling on that power a bit more, absolutely terrible, but really. I mean, that's supposed to be a DC, a DC signal. Now if I grab, if I get the biggest one. It's um, 470, 35 volts. Let's just check our voltages. And yeah, but we're, we're in the uh, range. We've already got 33 volts there. 33 uh, C, 34 C there. So we've got 44 C there. Now I'm going to chuck this uh, capacitor across. I know you're not supposed to really do them like this, but as long as we get the negative to the negative, eh? We don't uh, do anything untoward. A little bit of a spark. I can't reduce it though. Can I take it off? Yeah, take the capacitor off. Capacitor on. I can just get that balance there. I can get another one on. I got another one here of um what's this? This is six hundred and eighty nanofarads. This is a new capacitor, it's a niche kind of one. So this six hundred volt uh, this is a hundred volt, this is a four hundred and seventy microfarad. Uh, it's another niche con. <clears throat> Let's put this on and see. So that's with it the way it is at the minute. I'm going to put this one on across. There's one in parallel. Let's hope to get a little spark as I try to start to do this. And although I can see a bit of a difference, you may not be able to see that much of a difference. Bend those closer together. So I'm doing this literally, I'm just straddling the wires. One lead over each wire. If I turn this down, 
Krasna is part of the not actually you know sort of drawing any power and if I turn the input voltage up as well so let's say if I put this on 20 volts uh, so this is what I'm loving about having this auto transformer I don't have to I've now got variable AC and this is brilliant because uh, now I don't have to worry too much about you know I've got the right transformer for this I've got the right transformer for that I can I can just play around with it a little bit so we've got 20 volts there now and that's what it looks like with no load that's 200 millivolt per division uh, and if I start putting a load onto it just by turning up this at the minute it's on a one volt up not really drawing any power so start turning her up. And I don't know if you can see across the top here, but you see that amp meter? That's the amp meter on the uh, auto transformer. If you look at it carefully, you can just see it as it goes up. See that big jump there? Why is that? That's on 2.5 volts. Half an amp. Oh. And as you can see, well oh, that's saying like nearly an amp. I suppose they're not far off each other. And oh, look at the mess of that one. And that's with the um, Ruby XT two capacitors. Now if I were to take those two capacitors off, it's, uh, it's great having a little amp meter there because I'd never thought that was using so much power. So if I take that off, and if I take that this one off the back. <gasps> Look at that. Look at the difference it makes just putting that capacitor on. If I put that one capacitor back on, uh, on it goes. Look at the difference that makes. But now, you can see that says high because it's gone over its temperature. So I'm going to turn all that down before it all starts melting. That's at uh, 52. I have to keep an eye on these temperatures because I think these come out of an old computer system that said it goes up to 90C. So this is uh, way too warm for it at the minute. Dropping down a little bit on the um, on the tip 3055. So hopefully that will that will come back down to. If I turn it off altogether, it'll help it come back down to that level. Of course, we can see that's come down. Uh, yeah. and of course we've gone back down there on the amp meter for the auto transformer and now we've just kicked back in over here uh, 85 and dropping I've also got this resistor on this LED and this is just so I can um, oh there's just stop it from so much current and heating up. But it is, uh, I mean, I know that was getting warm and it does need a heat sink really if you're going to be using it, but the, uh, <clears throat> the LM317 doesn't get warm. Well, that's great that we don't have uh, that amount of voltage or being able to just like turn it up and turn it down a bit because I can go up you know as high as what the, uh, the transformer will allow um, but I just have to be careful of the input voltage because if I go too high the input voltage like by rights now this could all be burning because it's supposed to be 30 volt limit on the input voltage there but like I say, I've got a resistor, it's only 220 ohm. If I do the math, it'll probably let me go up a little bit, but it's not going to let me go up too much more, so I'm going to go down. But I can put a, a lot more into um, this LM317, the HV. It's, uh, I think it will go up to 60 volts going in, that's what the differential is on it. But of course, I don't like the idea of running these things like that. I don't like it thinking that I might just want to use 5 volts off it at an amp um, but have an input preset at 
you know, like 35 volts. Well, that'd be no good because there's a lot of difference there to, to cooling down. Um, all those volts differences between the five and then carrying the amp. Uh, that's that's quite a lot of power to dissipate. So being able to turn down the AC side of it um, means I don't have to regulate out so much power. It means that whatever power supply I'm trying to build or whatever or, you know use for power in a particular project means I may have to like build it every time, but I don't see that such a big problem. I don't, I don't think that's such a big problem. I need the experience anyway on building these things, so. But yeah, so that's just what I've been doing. I'm waiting for parts to do other stuff, and of course it's been nice warm weather, so I'll have to go out and do other stuff with people, and talk with them, and go to the pub, and yeah. I've got some other stuff I've been doing, like, here is a, it's four different um, circuit protection, reverse polarity. I'll do a video on that in a bit. Um, I'm just waiting for a P-channel MOSFET. I've actually got it to work with a, um, I think that's a, a P-channel transistor. But it works weird and I'll show you in the video and explain it. Yeah, so this is, this is nothing really. This is not a video sort of like trying to show how to build nothing or anything. It's just, um, I, I'm just prattling around with these different things and I need to be making a power supply. Oh yeah, I was going to say about this one. Well, this is the same basically as what's in here. Except for, for some reason, for some reason I don't seem to have as much voltage control over this and that's probably down to these resistors. So I don't want to have a little play around with these. and. Uh, I did notice on a few of the resistors I had sent in from China they were actually marked up wrong so there's a possibility I've got the wrong resistor in here. But what I'm going to end up doing with this as well as I'm going to put a, um, a couple of HVs in here because this um, the higher voltage 317s just because it just gives me the ability then to go above you know 30 volts. Um, sort of 40 50 volts is quite good so sort of temperatures coming down on this LED quite nicely and it's going down on the on the uh, on the tip 3055 so yeah I'll do some more playing around more experiments and when I've got some bigger capacitors it'll be nice to smooth out that so it's nice and smooth because like I said, that's like with one volt, and that's why I start turning that up. When I turn it up, it just gets not very good. The reason why it's jumping about is because it's on the AC, to keep it in the middle of the screen. Yeah. Anyway, thanks for watching, guys. It's, uh, uh I'll, I'll, I'll figure out something more interesting to then bring it back to you. But just at the meantime, this is what I've been doing, just prattling around with these things and, like I say, just waiting for parts and flying around my little, uh, my little Sima X5C and my, uh, H501S. Cheers for watching. Bye.